Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. I feel so bad for Japan. The Japanese people themselves didn't actually want the Olympics this year. They wanted to delay it yet again. But as I mentioned in a previous video, in fact, I think it was a Sunday sum up, the IOC and the Japanese government still forced them to host the Olympics anyway, during a pandemic. And so, of course, there have already been a few COVID outbreaks here and there, and the Japanese are understandably very nervous about all this. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. So much of the news leading up to this has just been scandal after scandal and embarrassment after embarrassment. So, most recently, I guess, unless something new has happened today, that's how often this stuff happens with the Japanese Olympics. The director of the opening ceremony was fired in the wake of the circulation of a video in which he made a Holocaust joke while performing a comedy routine. And that person who made the Holocaust joke had actually replaced an earlier act. And that earlier act suggested that plus-size comedian Naomi Watanabe could appear in the ceremony as the Olympig. Seem like really charming individuals. And then again, earlier in the week, musician Keigo Oyamata stepped down as the composer for the opening and closing ceremonies after the rediscovery of an old interview in which he said he bullied disabled classmates when he was in school. So, yikes. So that's just with the opening ceremony people. Now we get to actually talk about the fact that Japan has come up with these supposedly safe beds that are basically made of cardboard and can only support the weight of one person to prevent... Uh, sex between athletes at the Olympics, because, you know, it's a pandemic. <laughs> and as lots of horny people have pointed out, you can just do that stuff on the floor, or in showers, or in bathrooms, or, depending on your preference, just about anywhere. And this also comes as Japan was, you know, renovating and rejuvenating parts of their central area for the Olympics. It also resulted in the closure of a very famous Japanese fish market. And there's lots of Japanese people who weren't happy about a lot of that aspect of things. But most Japanese people right now are understandably miffed, considering their government has botched the pandemic at just about every stage. And to add to that, nearly 2,000 COVID cases were reported on Thursday. That is the highest single day total since mid-January. Like, oh, and then there was also the IOC director referring to the Japanese as Chinese, which is like the biggest thing that you do not do in Japan and to Japanese people. And this also hasn't even touched on all the other scandals, like over women's shorts for like volleyball and jumps and stuff. And people are saying, oh, they're too revealing or they're not revealing enough. And it's like... Can we please just stop policing women's bodies? Oh, and I nearly forgot, BLM apparel was also banned at the Tokyo Olympics. And I'm sure there's even more scandals and just embarrassing and cringy things that have been happening in the wake of this, but it is honestly just so embarrassing. The Japanese people don't want it. They had to declare a state of emergency in Tokyo two weeks before the games were starting. There's already high COVID numbers in Tokyo by their own standards. Athletes are having numerous issues. The whole bed thing is just a farce. The opening ceremonies and the scandal after scandal and the IOC just being a terrible institution. It's, it is all just really so much that really makes you wonder, what is the value of the Olympics anymore? Especially with, I think, a recent report saying that anywhere from 10 to 40% of all Olympians cheat. If the Olympics are, in theory, supposed to be about celebrating the, you know, best that humanity has to offer in terms of peak physical achievement, does it really matter if anywhere from 1 in 10 to 4 in 10 out of all those athletes decide to cheat? You know, it, it seems like the Olympics now are more about the spectacle, the opening and closing ceremony, and an excuse to redevelop an area and push homeless people and poor people out of the way, rather than about welcoming the world to a city in your nation and trying to represent the best of yourself and also welcoming the best that the rest of the world has to offer. Are the Olympics worth it if many people are cheating? It's just scandal after scandal. It's a monetary boondoggle that often bankrupts cities or nations. And again, I want to stress, the Japanese people wanted this to be delayed at least until the pandemic was over, probably 2022. 
and the IOC and their own government said, no, you have to deal with this. The very people playing host did not want to play host and they are being held hostage in a pandemic with rising COVID numbers and with embarrassment after embarrassment and scandal after scandal following the Tokyo Olympics. It really, really puts me at a loss for words to explain just how ridiculous and exhausting and shameful and embarrassing this is for everyone involved. The people of Tokyo are being held hostage by their own government and the IOC to put on a giant party when the world is unprepared and it's already become a giant boondoggling scandal that no one really wants. You know, everyone's looking exhausted and tired and the games themselves haven't even really started yet. The people of Tokyo are being held hostage and having to play host when they really didn't want to be. And now their health and security is being put at direct risk because of the IOC's greed and just single-minded focus and determination. And that is what's bothering me today.